a day in the life of a professional cricketer with Middlesex's John Simpson. Uh, so yeah, so now we're going to integrate a bit of power hitting. Um, you know, for me, obviously the game progressing. You know, you're seeing a lot of people. Uh, talking a lot more about power hitting. That's something obviously I try and incorporate into my game quite a bit. Um, you know, two big key principles for me, uh, head position and strong base. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, talk about sort of having a real good swing of the bat. And uh, what I see is generally is guys who sort of want to hit the ball hard, but they want to hit the ball hard from here. So I just try and get my hands as high as they can. And then that, you know, from a nice strong base, still head, that allow me to access where I want to hit the ball. So. I'm going to hit a few balls and uh, hopefully you'll get a good demonstration of what I'm trying to do. Oh, didn't watch the ball. Ow. Some good ones, some bad ones. It's obviously in that in that little hit there, a few you absolutely nailed, a few you came across. Anything from a technical perspective that you almost picked up whilst you were actually hitting the ball? Reasons why some got nailed and some didn't go exactly where you wanted it? Yeah, so the ones obviously that I hit really well. I had a nice strong base, hands high, nice still head. The ones that I didn't, I wasn't probably watching the ball as close as I, uh, as I wanted to. And, uh, I think I closed myself off. So like when I close myself off, you know, it only allows me to hit one side, which is offside. So if the ball is leg side, then ultimately you can see I'm crossed off here. So you know, just trying to work in, in lines and, and then obviously see where the ball is and allow my hands and head to get into position that I can just swing freely through the line, really. Um, you know, the, the, the ones that I hit well, I hit really well. But what I try and do is, you know, I try and hit that top of that back net um, you know, that's the trajectory I want to try and hit the ball at. Obviously, indoors, these softer indoor balls makes it quite tricky. So if I'm slightly back, obviously, ball goes up as you've seen in a few of them. Ones that I've really nailed, I've been more weight slightly more over my front foot, but I've got a real strong base. And like I said, my hands are high and that sort of allows me to, um, you know, freely swing through the line of the ball. Um, you know, I have my own sort of style. Uh, it's a little bit like a golf swing. Obviously, that's something that I love playing. So, um, yeah, there's sort of a little bit of batting and golf in, in the same. When you talk about opening up, is that more to do with your feet position or is it shoulder or is it something else? Yeah, for me, it's like front side. You know, as soon as that front side drops, you can only, you can only hit one way. So just really trying to have a real strong front side in here. It's almost, because you know, my hands are, are in a great position there on the front side. Wherever that ball goes now, I have the ability to then either swing through the line leg side or I can turn and let my hands release through the offside. Um, you know, especially when we're talking about power hitting and want to hit, hit a good strike. You know, as soon as that front shot side goes and that shoulder goes, I can, as I said, I can only hit one way. Um, obviously, if it's a shorter ball, I'm in a great position, but you know, we, we just want to be as instinctive as, as we can be. Um, one of the big things to, to my batting when I play really well is I'm instinctive. So um, that allows me to hit then you know, dictate where I want to hit the ball. First time. Doesn't happen very often. Oh. Oh. Ambitious. Try to swing way too hard. Right. Oh, no. Too far. Get too far across. So where does guard position and where you actually stand in the crease come into all this as well when it comes to power hitting? 
Yeah, a really good question. Um, you know, so for me, I like to stay on leg stump because uh, what that does is anything on leg stump kind of gives me a free hit. But what it allows me to do is open up the offside. You know, it gives me more freedom uh, with my bat swing. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I like to stand more leg side, and then obviously I can then mix and match. If guys are going wide Yorkers or they're coming more at my feet, then I might go a bit more offside to open up the leg side. It's just kind of a bit of a cat and mouse game, really. Um, so that's, you know, but as I said, I stand more leg side to try and open up the offside a little bit more. But as, a, as, as I said, obviously, then it becomes leg side. I know it's probably going down the leg side, therefore, uh, yeah, hopefully that should be a free hit. And when it comes to the trick shots, as they say, the <laughs> scoop shot, do you almost pick the pick it when it comes out the bowler's hand or is it all premeditated? Uh, I think I think it's all kind of premeditated. It's not really my forte, but it's something I practice quite a lot. Um, you know, you see the likes of Joss playing it unbelievably well, having that ability to sort of play either the reverse scoop or the, uh, or, the or the normal scoop over the keeper, um, you know, which is an incredible ability to have. Um, you know, from, from my perspective, uh, something I have to practice really hard. Obviously, I've got a few away there, um, but I've missed a few. Um, so, you know, as, you, as I said, you know, my strongest shots are probably hitting more sort of in, from that sort of cover to mid-wicket areas. And then obviously, um, you know, for me, for example, if the, guy, if the guy's going hard length with one of those back or both of those up, can I potentially get it up and over? But, you know, my first and foremost, I, I think I can clear the ropes sort of from, as I said, cover to sort of mid-wicket. So first drill we're going to do is a tennis ball, tennis racket. Neil's going to kindly hit some, some tennis balls. Uh, and all we're going to do here is he's going to hit uh, the tennis ball, just vary the length uh, and the lines. Uh, our focus here, a big catch and error, a nice strong base. Um, you know, just moving with a line of the ball and just getting a nice, real lip, uh, nice rhythm. Uh, and staying really nice and relaxed. Uh, obviously with a tennis ball, if you're not, the ball will bounce out. So second drill we're going to do is with a crazy catch. Uh, Neil's going to be behind and he's just going to throw some balls. Uh, and here, just focus on reactions, stay nice and uh, relaxed, nice and aggressive with our mindset, big catching area, and just reacting to wherever the ball goes. Third drill we're going to go to is going to use the catch it ramp. Uh, Neil's going to feed some of the balls, uh, and here, again, nice strong base, nice big catching area, obviously with a catcher ramp, it's got all the crazy little humps and bumps about it, so uh, here we're going to have a bit of a, a play around. And then one of my sort of signature drills is five on the spin, uh, quick fire, catch and drop, uh, which basically take all the tension away from my uh, hands and arms, uh, and just nice and relaxed with our mindset, and just let the body go. Big three things for me there are big catching area, strong base, uh, and then obviously reacting to whatever the ball um, goes. Uh, for, you know, for young kids, these are really good to keep developing reactions, like an aggressive mindset. And as I said, you know, big catching area, big strong base, uh, and then moving real quick. So when it comes to like feet position, what are you actually working on in this drill? Uh, so first of all, obviously my setup, because you're obviously a left hand hitter, so I'll, I'll try and have my left foot uh, on off stump. Like I said, my, my, my base is probably a little bit wider than most people's, but that's what, what I find works for me, is real comfort. Uh, and then obviously, depending upon where you're hitting the ball, line and length, you know, first and foremost, like I said, I'm trying to concentrate on a nice big catching area, uh, obviously, and then just rising with the ball and just being in a nice strong position where I can, uh, I can move. So for example, if you hit a few, maybe just a bit wider here, obviously that's bounced a little bit, so just getting in position where I can get my hips out of the way. Um, but yeah, just trying to... So the, this for me is, is one of the keys where you've hit a ball a little bit wider, where I see a lot with the young kids, is actually to just go with their hands and their head's nowhere near the ball. So for me, grooving, getting that big steps so and my head, hands and feet are now covering the line of the ball. So if that ball's got its edge, then I'm in a great position to catch it. I'm in a nice strong base. I've moved my head, hands and feet uh, behind the line of the ball. 
Um, but as I say, you know, I see a lot of kids, what they'll end up doing, if you hit it again, is they end up doing that, where the head's nowhere near the line of the ball, the foot's gone back and the leg straightens. So just for me, just really grooving all these different movements, which I've sort of, like I said to you, refined over a long period of time. And in cricket, a lot said when you're batting about head position. Is it the same with keeping? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely crucial. Um, you see with that one, ball's a little bit fuller, being able to get that big step across, head, hands, right behind the line of the ball. Um, you know, just this for me is just, is the ultimate drill because you can hit the ball wherever I want. You know, and I've just got to react and, and being in a really good position. And when you say rising with the ball, for a young kid perhaps wanting to get into keeping, can you explain that a little bit more? So yeah, it's just obviously staying down until the ball bounces. Um, you know, you see a lot of young kids who want to keep wicket, but the first thing they do is before you hit the ball, they come up. Then look at the position I'm in. My legs are straight, my head's back, my hands are not in a great position. So what we want to do is stay down for as long as we can and then come up when the ball bounces. Uh, you know, stay in a nice strong position. My head's overlying the ball, nice big catching area. You know, my hands are nice, nice and relaxed. So there you go, nice awkward ball. Hope I made that lucky. Easy. Oh, what about when you're blindsided down the leg side? Any tips? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, when the batter stood here, it makes things very, very tricky. Um, you know, you see a lot with young kids, the first thing they do, they move their head and feet. And I always say, if you put a batter there, can you see? And they say, well, no. So I always ask, what's the first part of the body that moves down the leg side? And they always say, foot and head. So if you might take my foot and head, again, I've lost, lost sight of the ball. So the first thing that moves is our hands. So, so hands go first and then our body moves after.